Hello my soccer universe, reviewing everything that happened in the past week in the Premier League and whatever happened in the Eredivisie and also in the Dutch Cup. So we have a full program there as well. It was an interesting week of course. Uh, the first time that I have the blue Manchester City jersey up there, there is of course no reason for me to wear it because Manchester United did the big thing they and that's why I'm wearing Manchester United. They beat uh, Manchester City after they had like an unbeaten, well, a winning streak of 21, 22 games, something, something like that. Absolutely crazy. So that is the biggest headline for me. Um, but we still have Manchester City well on the track for the title. Uh, so that didn't change. Change my was a statement win for Manchester United. We also have that Chelsea is quite solid. I mean, they, uh, Thomas Tuchel definitely went about changing uh, Chelsea to uh, give them more structure, have them solid at the back and then maybe he can slowly develop uh, them in, in, into style that they, um, uh, wanna, where he wants to eventually move to. But I have to say at the moment Chelsea looks very much on course to a top four finish. And when there is someone going up, there needs to be someone going down. And uh, what Liverpool is fabricating in the last few weeks, it just beggars belief, especially at Anfield. It's just 60 feet in a row at Anfield. That is unfathomable in any, in any way. And uh, especially since it doesn't seem to be a definite crisis. Uh, I mean, the team is not necessarily in crisis mode. I mean, Klopp is not losing the team or whatsoever. They just look apathic, gassed, whatever. Uh, I still think they can win the Champions League, but in the Premier League, uh, they might well qualify for the new Europa Conference League, which would be another cup for them to add to their cabinet. And in the Netherlands, I think the big news is that Ajax is well on track to win a double uh, once again. And yeah, uh, I think that's all there is. So uh, let's go into what was happening um, in the Premier League first. Uh, we had this weird midweek round, uh, round 29. I think this has been moved because of FA Cup coming come, come up. So I think this is, game can be still odd to me. Manchester City against Wolves, uh, I think the best thing we can say is it was 1-1 after 61 minutes, but uh, it was utter dom dom domination by Manchester City. I really don't like those Portugal jerseys by Wolves. In the end, City break them down, Gabriel Jesus, Mares and Gabriel Jesus again from the 80th on, they scored three, three goals. Uh, but they continued the winning streak, but we know for not too long. Leicester also, you know, I am starting to worry about Leicester. I really wish that they finished top four. Uh, and probably they are still kind of on track for it, but with uh, the many injuries that they have, the squad depth is not that big. So yeah, they find themselves down to Burnley. They, you know, just puts them back, but you know, I think it was a deserved one, one right there. Sheffield United gets a rare win against Aston Villa. Well, if Jack Grealish is not playing, that doesn't go much. Manchester United, at that point, we really thought they're completely out of the title race because they play a nil-nil like the Crystal Palace team that is everything but convincing in the fog. So, uh, not much there. Everton gets a win over West Brom, but I think the big result was, of course, Liverpool against Chelsea, where Chelsea pulls out the win with a, a goal by Mason Mount and, again, a solid performance and Liverpool not being really themselves. Uh, Timo Werner had even a goal this, this, this allowed and you really have to ask yourself, what is happening? What is happening with Liverpool? I touched a little bit on it. Uh, before that game, we also had that, and this was now round 33, was pulled for because this, this is when the League Cup final, well, you know, this most important of trophies, it's kind of pulled for uh, is played, so that's why they pulled those two for, or forward. It's just a whole lot of mess there. Uh, Spurs win thanks to an own goal from Adara Bio, Bioyo. Uh, a goal for Fulham is uh, this, this, this is up by handball. Fulham playing well, but you know, they need to get the wins. But as we will see, they actually got one. Um, but you know, after this midweek round, the table looked as follows. That City uh, pulls even clearer ahead of United with having a 14 point, was it 14? Yeah, 14 point lead at that point. 
uh, so rather 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 sizable and that's it for the championship we also had Liverpool dropping all the way to seventh with Chelsea moving into this top four spot that is so cherished and Everton and West Ham um, uh, changing spots not much changed on the bottom to be honest so um, was an interesting round there um, and then we move into the main round uh, that was played on, on on the weekend where I think Burnley Arsenal has to mention because I think both goals that was good were rather weird I mean the first one Ob Obeyang makes a nice trick takes the shot but I think the goalkeeper needs to save that one and then the Chris Wood goal where uh, Shaka wants to pass over the top without the evolution hits uh, Chris Wood uh, who just has no choice or whatever to put it in that that was really weird Arsenal overall the better team having more chances but you cannot make such in the, in the, in the individual mistakes and so uh, Arsenal drops more points and uh, if they want to play in Europe next season either they win the Europa League or they better get a, a winning streak going but the games are not getting a lot easier um, Brighton also continues their remarkable streak of playing well and not get what I mean. I mean, this time they didn't have that many chances, but they had a lead through Lalana. Uh, they can score even. However, Ian Archer with a really, really nice finish where you think he goes past the goal, goal but then you know, fakes it and uh, puts in it. That was a really nice finish. And then very late on, Amarte gets the win for Leicester, um, where I have to say, Ian Archer has been scoring goals. That Jamie Vardy did not. Jamie Vardy, Vardy was out, but he's at least stepping up because he always, always think uh, Ian Nacho, uh, not good for the, for the Premier League, seemingly good enough for Leicester. Uh, and then another Liverpool loss to Fulham. Yes, Fulham is a team that plays nice, and Fulham is probably a team that should uh, definitely should definitely stay in the in, in the Premier League. The way they're playing, they're playing, uh, they really play attractive, playing forward with a positive outlook. The only thing is goals are sometimes missing, or they make too too many draws. Well, they got a goal here through Lemina, uh, who uses a horrible mistake by Mohamed Salah. Liverpool having some chances, but again, I think overall, Fulham deserved to get. At least a point, and probably deserve to get the win out of there. And six losses at Anfield. I mean, I cannot repeat. I think they will be happy that the game uh, against Leipzig, the home game, is played in Budapest because otherwise, uh, who knows what would have happened. And then the big Manchester derby, to be honest. Given how the table was standing, this was really more for pride. And then it, I will kind of saw this coming that, uh, yeah, this might go United's way. Um, although I really expect it, given that United had played so many draws and um, nil-nil draws in a row and not scoring. So um, I guess the Manchester City team that seemed to be flying. <sighs> Scholes again, those derby games are very hard to predict. And it's decided basically early on because G G Gabriel Jesus uh, steps on, I think, was it Raheem Sterling? Uh, no, Raheem Sterling, stupid me. Anthony um, uh, Martial, of course. Stupid. That, that, that was really, really stupid. And Fernand steps up, makes it 1 0. And you know that United likes to hang back and hit the, uh, the, the opponent oh, on the counter attack. And there is, did not really many chances come from City. United played this well. Uh, they had a little bit of luck. I think in the 48th minute, uh, Sinjenko hit the crossbar. And right from that kickoff, Luke Shaw um, gets the ball after pass by Rashford. Uh, no, nah, gets, gets the ball, runs through the entire uh, left side, then pays, plays the ball to, Ra to Rashford, who gives it right back. And then a shot that I thought it initially was deflected, but I'm not 100% sure. It goes through six legs, through his uh, an impossible trick shot in, in, in a way, make, 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 make it to nil. I have to say, the longer the game went on, the more chances I saw City having, but it was always that uh, either you couldn't get the shot off or you were in a bad position or the last pass was missing. So, overall, a routine win for Manchester United, who again win against the big team. It's the small teams that have trouble because against the big teams, they know they can hang back and they're dangerous enough. But a big win none, nonetheless. I personally wonder. Uh, for United fans, um, is 
this important to show that uh, you've beaten City, that you know, even if they will win the championship by a canter, that yeah, but in the head to head, Manchester United would have won. Is this also something important, or would you really rather go for the championship? That's something I'm definitely interested in. Spurs can be a lot, a lot of fun, and you know, uh, with Kane, Bale, and Son up front, that sounds that if they keep that up that could 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 be really really exciting uh of course it happened against a crystal palace team that seems to break all the negative records uh out there and still is not really in the relegation conversation which is something that bog boggles my mind uh, you have their eternal rival which is for me one of the weirdest rivalries in the premier league brighton who play well but are definitely uh considered for re relegation crystal palace play awful and not so let's see Harry Kane assists Gareth Bale for, for the first goal. Uh, Benteke with a really nice header for an equalizer um, that came maybe a little bit against the run, the run of play. But then again, um, Kane nicely assists Bale uh, for uh, his second. A little bit later, a wonderful Kane shot. And Bale was also involved. I think Bale played Doherty, who gave it back to uh, Kane. Really a nice shot from outside, outside the box, make it 3-1. And then he adds even a fourth after a son assist, which was the 14th of the season, meaning uh, they break the record from Shearer and Sutton. And then today we had the Chelsea beat Everton 2-0. Uh, the first, Havertz having a big role in, in there. He had a goal disallowed. He more or less assisted the own goal um, uh, that in the end Godfrey scored. And I think he even got fouled for the penalty that Jorginho converted in 65th. And then um, Timo Werner could have probably made the score higher. What was Everton thinking playing in those churches? I actually think if they would come with a pure blue, uh, yellow look, that would work much, much better as a contrast. And then uh, just finished, haven't seen anything. I was watching Inter Atalanta, West Ham United against Leeds United 2-0, West Ham keeping the streak up. So with all these results, the table now looks as follows. And look at the chance of a championship. It was 100% for Manchester City with that win. It's 11 points. It's only 11 points. It's a 1% chance for United to get the title. Uh, it's seems highly highly unlikely i also want to point out that we had a very uh we, we had two rounds now with uh, little goals and the goal average that was at 3.4 in october is now at down to 2.6 the premier league uh has not been goal filled as of late so that this av average coming down is uh quite something and i would say this has a lot to do with liverpool who are not freely scoring it's not only liverpool but you see liverpool dropping now in eighth spot really 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 bad uh, as for the top four the current top four um are favored to finish this way you don't know about leicester could west ham do something but you know uh both teams i think are not strong enough in, in, in the scores that I, I actually would think um that leicester would finish above west ham um but you know spurs also slowly entering the conversation there as well and liverpool yeah level with spurs but spurs has a game game in hand better rating but i don't see liverpool finishing in the top four and as i said brighton only a point ahead of fulham and fulham having a game more i think they they, they look good but if you ask ask me of the teams down i'd rather see Although I really like, like, like them, but Newcastle at the moment would not deserve to stay up. Uh, and also I think Burnley is also a team that probably is on the edge of being Premier League worthy. Although they had a pretty good run in the Premier League. Uh, if we just, because we have, you know, many um, games in hand here and there. Um, Aston Villa especially, they would move even ahead of Liverpool. You see the bars, you see how bad Liverpool, Arsenal and Brighton are actually now even Sheffield United. Um, where on the top yeah Leicester is doing well Everton is also still doing well and Crystal Palace is also outperforming themselves a little bit but towards the end of the season now we see we are moving with 10, about 10 games per team left uh, the um, difference between project and expected of course gets a lot smaller expected standings tell also a story it's City then United then Chelsea and Leicester relatively safe for the last um, top four spots Liverpool dropping now only in six that's why they're down here which uh, we wouldn't think 
maybe Spurs, Everton, Arsenal, Aston Villa could have a chance getting in, into Europe. Um, let's see. I think that the East is where Wolves has no chance as does Leeds and, and it's on there. Kind of in no man's land together with Southampton. And then I think with Crystal Palace, this is where the relegation uh, conversation starts. But as I said, Crystal Palace, a very little chance. Brighton, Burnley a little bit more, but it's basically between Fulham and Newcastle uh, in that one. Midweek, we have, of course, Manchester City against Southampton. A uh, game that's full pulled forward, so can City go back on track? I would assume so. And then on the weekend, I have to say the big one is, of course, the North London Lower between Arsenal and Spurs. Um, I also think a Manchester United against West Ham is a rather interesting game there. Other than that, Leeds United-Chelsea could be a fun game to watch, but let's see. I think the way Chelsea is playing, Leeds United will have it hard there um and who else is in in the conversation with leicester against sheffield United should, should be in uh, liverpool at wolves yeah away from home liverpool does fine in the dutch cup we have ajax winning against herrnwein 3 nil vitesse also expectedly winning 2 nil over venlo so we have ajax against vitesse in the final i'm not sure if it will be really played at six o'clock but it is scheduled for the 18th of april and ajax of course overwhelming favorites there in the league big win for feyenoord six nil over venlo um who had of course the mid the mid game that definitely helped ajax also relatively easy over groningen uh Ravenberg with a very uh interesting shot from a distance you know it looked like he intended to be there but you also think the goalkeeper should get it once Alea made in the 54th 2-0, uh, uh, the game was done. Tadic at uh, third, and then very late on Groningen puts one back. Um, and PSV keeps also uh, up the step. Uh, two goals by Sahavi in the 10th and the 20th, 27th. Very similar as he was always straddling, he was always straddling the offside line, just not, not being so having the pass in, and it goes in. Um, Cox uh, with a uh, gets a uh, um, goal back, but then Mad Mad Wake uh, with a comeback goal that was really, really, really a great shot. Vitesse beating AZ also, that is a big, 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 big one. And it was already 2 0. Uh, then uh, Vitesse player uh, Cornelis is set and off, and Carlsen can put all, 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 only one back, but yeah, uh, that was a vital win for Vitesse to keep them in the hunt for the European spots. It also means that Ajax is now even more dom dominant. Yes, PSV is still in there, but Ajax has a game in hand. Vitesse is going for the Europa League, League spot and, you know, trying to avoid, or, or this fixed spot, trying to avoid the playoff. Uh, so they are still in the fight with AZ for that. I think uh, Fener, Groningen and Utrecht will probably stay where they are. Uh, we see when we adjust, nothing really changes at this moment with Vitesse being the positive surprise of the season. And also in the table, everything seems to be pretty much uh, set in stone in many ways, given the ratings uh, and how the season has been developing so far. We have a makeup game between Venlo and Sparta uh, on Wednesday, and then uh, we have a full round on um, the weekend with, of course, the big one between PSV and Feyenoord, an absolute league classic. I think that against Twente could also be an interesting one, as is Utrecht against, as against Vitesse. Ajax should have it easy. So let me know what you thought about the games uh, and on, on the weekend. As I said, it was an interesting round in many ways. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Drop a line below to let me know your thoughts and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.